Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to dive into the exciting new feature which is introduced with C Sharp 13 called Hybrid Cache. This is a powerful caching mechanism and it's, in my opinion, it's kind of a very easy to use for web API performance. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though it is released with C Sharp 13, it can still be used with the older version of the framework. As you can see, it supports .NET standard version 2.0 and 2.1. It also supports .NET 8 and 9 and the legacy .NET framework 4.6.2. As of now, this is in preview and that is the version I'm using. And I'm using Microsoft.extension.caching.hybrid. That is the NuGet package we should be using. And I'm also using an extension for Redis. I'm going to come to that later, how to use it, where to use it. And for now, let's just focus on the hybrid caching. So for configuring hybrid caching, we can use the add hybrid cache, which is an extension method on the services to add the hybrid cache into the dependency injection framework. And the add hybrid cache is what is going to give the configuration we need for setting up the hybrid cache. Now for hybrid cache, there are multiple options that comes. So it has the key length, which is the length of the key for a cache, maximum key length. It has default entry option, which I'm going to show below. I am already using it. Whether to disable the compression of the cache and maximum key length, which I just described. It also has a maximum payload in bytes. That's the maximum size of an item to be cached. This is something which is useful when you are using in-memory cache and you want to keep a cap on the memory usage. So the feature that I am using here is the default entry option. And in default entry options, I'm setting up two values. One is the expiration, one is the local cache expiration. Local cache expiration is something which is used for the local cache, which is the value which is stored in memory. And the expiration is the overall cache duration, which is passed along to the distributed cache, if we use distributed cache, which we are going to use in this example. So these are the two things. You can see here there's a comment that is given, or there's a mainly a compiler indication that this is evaluation and I'm okay evaluating. If I get rid of this hint, then it's going to start throwing an error saying, you know, this is in evaluation. So I'm adding this hint for the compiler, telling the compiler that I understand this is in evaluation so that it doesn't throw a error. And then here in the weather forecast method, which comes out of box. I'm just calling, I've created a weather provider where I have the logic calling the get forecast, passing the time, which is incoming time. Now weather provider, what I have is, right now I have commented out the code for creating the cache so that I show you without the cache, random number, and then I'm going to add the cache to show how it behaves with cache. And in terms of coding, as you can see, it is no different than it's not going to be much difference than other, except that it's going to be, there are a few nuances where it makes it very helpful to use this hybrid cache. And I'm going to touch upon all of them. So once it is up, I can go and I can try it out and let me give a random value for time. And let's execute. You see that it is minus 20 and minus three. Next one is minus 10 and 15 and it will keep changing because you know, it's just a random number. Now let's go back to the code and here let's remove these commenter sections 
and let's run again. And this time we'll see that it will cache the data for one minute. So now if I give same value, try it out, it gives 3391 and it is going to continuously give 3391 for a minute. Once a minute has expired, it's going to give a new number because the cache will expire. If you remember, we created the cache, which is one minute. So here the local cache expression was for a minute. And you see now after a minute, it changed to 47 and one was six. Now there are few things or few benefits before I get into the distributed cache, which is also important. There are a few important benefits of hybrid cache. First of all, as you can see, the API is extremely clean. It literally one method we have to call, which is get or create a sync. And it will get it if it is there. If it is not there in the cache, it will call this lambda to fill the cache and return the value. So here we are calling a get or create a sync method here we are passing the date as a key. You can pass anything as key. We are passing the date as a key. And then we are giving this lambda. Now what this lambda does is, this lambda is going to get called only if there is nothing on the cache. And that can be because the cache was never added or the cache expired after the cache expiration. Now get or create will get the value in that case. Otherwise it is just going to return from the cache. So. The interface is extremely simple and easy to use. By default, it provides two level of caching, which is in process as well as out of process. If you have not set up out of process, then it will not go to out of process, it will be just in process. But if you have set up out of process, it will not go to out of process all the time. It will keep in out of process, but it will keep a copy in process also for more optimization and in process, as you can see, you have two different settings where you can say when in process goes out or expired versus when out of process expires. So that gives you a tremendous advantage. The other problem which can happen for other caching packages which hybrid cache handles is concurrent request handling. Hybrid cache ensures that only one request fetches the data from the source while other waits preventing cache stampede. If two threads are calling the get or create async at the same time, one of the thread will be given the priority to call this lambda to fill the cache where the other will wait. It is available out of box in this implementation, which is very important. And that is a huge advantage of hybrid cache. Now let me go and enable the Redis cache implementation. Now instead of waiting for five minutes for the cache to expire, I can make it as five seconds and I can make it as 30 seconds. So we'll show that the cache doesn't expire for 30 seconds. Now let's try a different value for the key. So we see that it gets a value minus 916 and it saves it into the distributed cache. And now Approximately more than five seconds is passed, but we see that the cache is not getting expired. Though the local cache is, but the distributed is not. And now after 30 seconds, this cache is going to expire, the distributed cache, and we are going to get a new cache value. And we can see the value changed. It's zero degree and 32 now. And now it's going to remain like this for next 30 seconds. So in conclusion, hybrid 
cash, in my opinion, is a very powerful and efficient solution, which combines the both in-memory and distributed caching and provides a better performance and scalability at the same time. Now, in terms of API beyond the getter set, which is probably what we are going to use most of the time, it has few other method, which is worth mentioning. And they are one is remove a sync, which can be used for removing something from the cache. Then set a sync, which is just setting a cache value. And then we have remove by tag, which is removing with respect to tag. What is tags? As I mentioned earlier, briefly, we can use tags also during creating. So you can see there's an option of tags, which is a nothing but a array of string. And you can create a multiple tags associated to a key. And based on tag, you can remove something from the cache. So I'm not sure how useful the tags is. I'm pretty sure it is added because there are situations where it is needed. But for majority of the cases, get or create a sync should be good enough. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.